Talofa, everyone, and good morning. Welcome to day three, our final day of the National Pacific Islander Violence Prevention Conference, our ninth annual. We want to thank each of you for participating over the past two days. And thank you for those of you who are sticking it out with us for the last day. Um, just some housekeeping things to remember. Please keep yourselves muted uh, while the presentations are going. And thank you again for being here today. My name is Sincera Teo, and I'm one of the co-founders of PICTAR. I'm stepping in here for Susie this morning. Uh, our first session today will be the Tauhiva Project, promoting sexual health and wellness in the Pacific Islander community. And today, I am very honored to introduce a few of our um, powerful women for this panel. And we'll also hear from Ben, who'll be introducing Ashley. So, Vienna Pau. Vienna Pau, formerly an elementary school teacher, she is currently the Assistant Director of Clinical Services for the Women in Jeopardy and KRH Transitional Housing Programs at the YWCA Utah. Additionally, she has worked on various projects and collaborations aimed at bringing awareness to the Pacific Islander community on issues such as sexual violence, domestic violence, mental health, and civic engagement. Cecilia Pau. Cecilia Pau is a Tongan American born in Inland Empire, California, and raised in Utah, where she currently lives with her four year old son and loving husband of eight years. She is a freelance copywriter and a founding member of the Tauhiva Project. She holds a profound love for her heritage, community, and culture, and hopes to elevate each as she advocates for sexual health and wellness. Ashley Fili Moyatu is a Utah native, now living in New Breton, Connecticut. She's, she is a research and development engineering tech in the medical device inter, industry. Ashley is one of the founding members of the Tauhiva Project. She is an avid bookworm, powerlifter, and cosplayer. Ashley is passionate about the work of the Tauhiva Project because they can now help cultivate a healthy and open conversation on sexual health and wellness. Thank you. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, we are so happy. My name is Cecilia, like they said, and um, we're so happy to be here um, presenting on the Dalhiba project and what um, our cause is. Um, today, I'll go ahead and share my screen. <clears throat> Um, so we are, we are the Dalhiba project promoting sexual health and wellness in the Pacific Islander community. And um, just so we can um, introduce ourselves, I'll let Vianna go ahead um, and start start us off. <clears throat> um, all right, hello everybody. My name is uh, Vianna Pau. I think you gave a brief um, introduction of me earlier, um, but I, I will at least talk about um, who I am as far as the Dahiba Project. So my current role with the Dahiba Project, um, I work on advocacy and um, uh, providing resources that we share on our platform. Um, my ultimate goal with participating in or being a part of the Dahiba Project is a thriving Pacific Islander community. Um, I think one of my biggest achievements so far uh, I feel like I'm yet to see what my biggest achievement is. I think the Hiva Project, I'm, you know, is something that we're happy to share with you, with you all. Um, something we're happy to put out to the community, and I do find it as an achievement. But I, I think there's um, more to come. A uh, fun fact about myself: I am a cat lover, cat lady, um, and yeah, that's that's me. Hi, I'm Ashley Filamoyatu. Uh, my current role with the Dahiva Project is a content specialist with a focus on individual and personal development. Uh, my ultimate goal with TVP um, and myself is to go after everything that scares me. Um, my biggest achievement for me is learning to love all of me unapologetically. And fun fact, as mentioned before, I'm a powerlifting, cosplaying, book-loving nerd. So yeah, this is me. And my name is Cecilia Babu. My current role within TVP is a content specialist with a focus on child development. 
Um, my ultimate goal is to help Pacific Islander parents teach their children how to be safe and knowledgeable when it comes to their bodies and sex and, and physical development. Um, one of my biggest achievements so far is having and raising my four-year-old son. And a fun fact about me is I'm a musical theater nerd. And when I'm not playing with my son, I'm watching anime or reading a book. Um, <clears throat> the inception of Thou Hiva Project was brought about by a recognized need within our Polynesian community. At the beginning of 2021, our founding members were brought together through a very tragic and very public sexual assault case that moved us enough to take action. Um, we each grew up in different Polynesian households and under varying parenting styles. But one thing was the same for us all. We were never taught about sex in the home and hardly in school either. And if it was ever mentioned, it was to warn us never to do it or it, horrible things would happen. Um, so we bonded over that experience. We bonded over the shared experience of growing up in a culture that surrounds sex and sexual education with a ton of shame and secrecy. And this was a cultural norm. It was tapu or forbidden or sacred, uh, depending on the context to use it in, um, with, to speak about our bodies. <clears throat> um, it's tapu to speak about um, sex and touch, safe or unsafe touch. Uh, it's tapu to speak about puberty or even feelings or urges that we may experience as we grow, especially as young young people. And we knew that if our cultural norms stayed this way, that there would be no progress toward change. And we also uh, knew that if you know better, you do better. And um, so we were bonded together through our shared similarities. So we were all Polynesian. Um, we were all affected by sexual assault directly or indirectly. Um, we've each <clears throat> we've each experienced, or we've never had a proper sexual education in home or at school, and we each saw a need for change in the PI community. So we searched for a way to meet that need that we saw, and also as a way like to combat sexual, um, sexual assault. We first started by looking for ways to volunteer with some kind of group or a nonprofit uh, with similar goals, but uh, to our surprise, there were no organizations within our PI community that directly catered to advocating for sexual health and wellness, so we organized ourselves. <clears throat> the first order of business for us was to decide on a name for our project, as well as our values and mission. We knew that the name by which we would call ourselves would need to hold cultural significance. And what is more significant to a Pacific Islander than their relationships? Thou Hiva Project, literally translated Thou Hiva, means to maintain and nurture relationships or reciprocity. It's a practice that has been a sustaining part of our culture for generations. Relationships mean a lot to us in our culture. That means relationships with ourselves, our family, and friends, and our community. We extend Thauhiva to include all aspects of relationships, even sexual wellness. Thauhiva um, is about creating balance, symmetry, and so forth. And this is a quote by Dr. Devita Oka'ili. In, uh, from the U of U Pacific Islander uh, webinar series. And we agree with this wholeheartedly. One of the first things we sat down and talked about after we established our name was our mission and what exactly we wanted it to look like. <clears throat> so our vision or what we wanted to become was a Pacific Islander community where healthy relationships can thrive mentally, emotionally, socially, and physically. And our strategy or how we will work toward that vision was normalizing dialogue on sexual wellness, sharing resources, building our community through social media and partnerships. And our goals and objectives were how, or how we were going to engage or, or gauge our success was monitoring and measuring growth from brand and grassroots work to a website, a nonprofit, and beyond. 
Drawing inspiration from our shared Tongan culture, we created our values as well. Fa kave'i gola, in, or in other words, the four golden pillars of Tongan society, um, was coined by Queen Salotetupo III, and we drew inspiration from, um, from her to create our values. Uh, Tauhiva, nurture relationships, our very first value and our first pillar. We are committed to nurturing and cultivating healthy relationships with ourselves, our families, and friends, and our community, and our culture. Paka Papa, respect. We believe in honoring one another's experiences, stories, truths, and rights as human beings in a way that is wholesome and healing. Lototo, humility. We are committed, uh, committed to being teachable, open to new ideas, new ways of living, and new ways of connecting to ourselves and one another. Mamahi'i me'a or dedication. We recognize the need for growth and change that supports sexual wellness in our community and our culture. We are dedicated to supporting education, awareness, and advocacy for sexual wellness in our Pacific Islander community. <clears throat> Sex education is about life skills, and we wholeheartedly believe this. Did you know that as of October 1st, 2020, only 30 states require sexual education to be taught in public schools, and only 28 of those states require both sex and HIV education? Also, only 22 of those 30 states require that sexual education be medically accurate. This is something that um, we hope to, to change, especially within our Polynesian community. Now, um, we had our mission, we had our name and our values laid out. Um, the only step for, or the, the next step forward was choosing a platform. Um, and it was a pretty easy pick when it came time to do this. Um, we wanted to be present or where our Polynesian people were and most everyone had an Instagram. So that's where we decided um, our content would live. Uh, it provided a great space to tell our story. Um, it, it was a great space to engage with our supporters, um, promote our message, bring more awareness to our cause as well. <clears throat> and now I'll, I'll, I will um, pass it over to you, Vienna. Awesome, thanks, uh, Celia. Uh, so as Celia mentioned, um, this was the mission and the vision that we have for what we wanted to do and put out into the community. And um, since um, thinking about the tapu around sexual um, education or just talking about sex in general, it was important for us to figure out a way to normalize the conversation for uh, Pacific Islanders. Um, so I'll be digging into or diving into how we um, are doing that. Uh, before I do, I did notice that um, Puna has put into the chat um, resources if any of this feels triggering to you. Um, what I want to say um, as a disclaimer um, that sex has become a normalized thing for the three of us to talk about. Um, so it is the way we talk about it amongst with each other and then also on our platform feels very regular. Um, and so if this is something that feels uncomfortable for you, feel free to turn, you know, turn it off, step away, um, do whatever you feel like you need to do to take care of yourself. Um, at the same time, I also want to invite you to lean in to this conversation with curiosity and an open mind. Um, we will have a question and answer portion at the end um, of the presentation. You can drop questions or feedback in the chat, um, or you can save it towards the end, and we'd be more than happy to talk through this. Um, and then just also kind of going back really briefly, uh, briefly on some of the things that um, the values that Celia spoke about, I think the one that comes to mind is the um, humility or the teachability that we are still new to this. Um, we uh, clearly we have a lot of passion about it, but we're open to um, feedback and how this conversation lands on our community. Um, okay, so next slide, please, Celia. Okay, so how we are doing um, 
how we're doing the normalizing the conversation. So these are three of the main things that we're doing, and then I'll get into each one. So shifting our perspective and recentering our uh, recentering our values, removing shame from the conversation, and then destigmatizing uh, the resources. Next slide, please. Uh, shifting perspective and recentering our values. Next slide. Okay, so here we have this image, and many of you may have seen this before. And when you're first looking at it, um, you may see one image, others may see something else. So how many of you, and you don't have to answer, but just you know, think about it or hold this in mind, how many of you see an old lady first? Because um, some of you may see the old lady, and then how many of you see a young lady? So if you first saw the old lady or the young lady, either one, are you able to shift your perspective to see the other image? So this is, we can think about open conversations about sex, sexual wellness in the same way. We can also think about our cultural values in the same way that we don't necessarily need to throw it away. Um, we can just shift how we look at it. Uh, next slide, please. So um, with talking about sex, um, let's see, Celia mentioned tapu before, and what that has meant to us is that conversations or things in our culture are either sacred and we don't, or we talk about it in a very specific way, or there's a protocol around it, or it's secret. It becomes a boundary and we don't talk about it or address it at all. Um, at all. And oftentimes what can happen when we're doing that is that things can feel bad, um, taboo. Uh, and I, I say taboo like more in the English sense and not tabu in like the Pacific Islander sense. So it can either have like a negative con connotation or there can be shame towards it. What we hope to do is shift our perspective around sex ed um, and sex in general and um, to think about it more as educational, informative, and then as a form of harm reduction. Uh, next slide. Okay, so uh, as Celia had mentioned before, relationships is, I feel like, and this is my own perspective, is at the core of who we are as Pacific Islanders. It is the one thing that I feel like we value the most. Um, but how those relationships, how we value it or how we prioritize it, uh, I think that's one thing that we are also hoping that we can kind of shift. So um, many of you may have heard the term like family over everything, and that kind of puts family at the center or at the top of our priority list or what we value the very most. Um, meaning that uh, anything that is required of us, anything that we do, we are going to prioritize our uh, familial relationships. With Pacific Islanders, family can um, be upwards of 20, 30, 100 people, however you see that. Um, and so that, those are a lot of relationships to put first. So at the center, we have family. Next would be our friends, our community. And if this is something that you're taught, um, either you come last or you might not have been taught to value your relationship with yourself at all. Uh, next slide. How we hope to shift that is putting ourselves at the center and prioritizing um, and prioritizing who you are um, with the hope that as you are prioritizing yourself and caring for yourself, that you are able to attend to the other relationships, which would be your family, your friends, um, and then your community. And I also just want to say that um, what I'm, some of the things that I'm referencing and talking about, this may not be true for everybody. Um, some of this is just very, very general. And, and so I'm speaking mostly to like the general um, sense of this. Okay. So um, as I said, that what we're trying, our, what we're trying to do is shift our perspective so that we put ourselves at the center and then can attend to our relationship with ourselves. I think there's this new radical idea of self-care, which may feel unfamiliar to us as Pacific Islanders. Um, something that does feel familiar, familiar to us is um, serving the community, serving others. And those are the ways in which, at least how I've been taught and how to care for myself is to care for these relationships. 
um, but acknowledging that I have needs as well and that it's important for me to acknowledge them and care for them helps me be able to show up for my family, my friends and my community um, in a healthier way. All right, uh, next slide, please. And so um, as we're thinking about these relationships and then how we value them, we want to shift. Uh, we want to shift from protecting my family to making my family a safe community. What I mean by this is um, oftentimes um, some of the, because this is such a strong value and this becomes at the, you know, it comes at the core uh, of what we value that sometimes um, some of the cultural, cultural norms that we have is to be silent about things that happen within our family, whether it's sexual abuse, molestation, things like that. And, that shame can be applied to that. And it's hard to talk about it or hard to know what to do. Um, so then we just sweep it under the rug. Our hope is that we can shift that to making our family a safe community, providing resources and um, just dialogue and conversation on how to do that, what that looks like. Also, we're not saying that we have all the answers. This is just a starting point. Um, but this is what we're trying to, our, our hope is to at least shift our perspective um, in how we talk about sex and how we think about our relationships. All right, next slide, please. So the next piece would be to remove shame for the conversation. If we are now in a place where we can talk about sex, um, it's still, and both in the Pacific Islander community and just in like our society at large, sex carries, um, it can carry, shame and it can be you know sometimes it can feel a little bit uncomfortable especially if it's something that you're not used to or something that you haven't practiced in having conversations around it at least with like family um, that it's important for us to address where shame is showing up in this conversation uh, next slide uh, so how does shame show up in these conversations around sex sex uh, next slide, please. Or sorry, not next slide. If you can just tap enter so that they, the whole list comes up. So lack of dialogue on sex in the home. Oftentimes um, families, let's say, we'll take parents, for example. Some may have a really good intention of wanting to talk to their kids about sex. They just don't have the proper tools or, um, or know how to go about it, especially if it's something that has never been modeled for them. Um, so the avoidance might be something that happens, but then if we're not talking about sex, uh, because it is a very normal and natural thing, um, curiosity is bound to rise. And where do people go for that information if they cannot get it from their home? Um, so improper terms for body parts. Um, this is something that I feel like can be hard to lean into um, in naming our body parts as they are and teaching that to our children. Um, so rather than terms such as private parts or your flower or your petals or the no-no zone, using, using the actual anatom uh, anatomical terms, which would be penis, vagina, um, breasts. Now I know that those things can, um, it may, may or not um, have like a jarring reaction or may, you know, make you feel like, oh, I don't know how I feel about that. But the discomfort that you feel, I feel like should be like an indication that these are things that we should probably talk about a little bit more. You may not be at the point where you wanna to talk to your kids about it, um, but a space like the Huibao Project and talking with other peers, other community, community members on what is working for them, what isn't working for them, that might be a place where we wanna do that and remove that shame so you're ready to have these conversations in your family. Um, the next part that I put in here is affection. So with affection, and this is just drawing from my own personal experience, when I was a kid and we would be watching movies and somebody was kissing on scene, my parents would be like, close your eyes, don't look at it. And so we would. But what happens then is that shame, you know, it's like, if I'm not supposed to watch this, is it bad? And if I do watch it, I then feel shame because my parents told me not to. Um, so when we're talking about affection or watching it, just naming it for what it is, like that kissing or whatever you feel like you're, however you want to teach this to your kids, um, or even, you know, internalize it for yourself, that kissing is a sign of affection and love, but that it isn't linked to shame or anything bad. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so 
Well, the next piece, last piece for me at least, well, there's, sorry, there's a lot of stuff that I wanted to talk about. And I know we have a short amount of time, uh, but I did at least, I, I see some things in the chat. Um, if it's okay, we'll save those for the end for the Q&A. Okay, so destigmatizing the resources. Um, if we've recentered our values and we've removed the shame, and now we're ready to, you know, find out what's out there. Um, a lot of the resources that are out there carry some stigma, and so it's important for us to talk about those resources and talk about what they actually do. Okay, so next slide. So first we wanna think about where um, our community is currently accessing information on sexual health and wellness. If you're not going to your family and if you are not being ta taught sex ed in your school that applies to you, um, or if it doesn't feel like it's information because what they'll teach in school is gonna be very broad in general, but it may not cover um, gender. It may not cover what sex would look like for our LGBTQIA plus. So, or it may not address some of the cultural things that come up. Um, so some of our community will go to the internet. You'll go to your peers, um, social media, TV, film, and pornographic websites. And while those are places that you can go for information, it may not be accurate. And it, um, for parents, it may not be the kind of information about sex that you want your kids to learn about. Um, so on here, I, I put the pornographic websites and I thought that it was interesting to include here um, pornographic websites because and I learned this probably back in like 2018, 19, and I'm not sure if things have changed since then, um, but uh, because uh, so porn websites like Pornhub, they noticed that on their search engine, they were getting a lot of searches for things that were specific to sexual ed. So on their pornograph on their website, they created a portion on there for people to be able to, um, if they had questions about sex or if there was something they were wanting to learn, that they could figure it out there on that website. What that says is that a lot of people are they're they're curious and they're questioning and wondering, and this is probably not just teens. I'm sure it's many adults, especially if you haven't been taught about sex or or never had that conversation. Um, but this is where a lot of people are going to learn about sex. And while um, we don't wanna pass judgment on you know, anybody's practices or what they might think or feel about porno pornographic websites, but I do think it's important to think about where your children are getting their information and if that's something that you feel like that's okay with. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so as we're destigmatizing the resources um, and the one that a few that I, haven't mentioned yet, um, for example, Planned Parenthood, um, and then also just sex education at large, um, that Planned Parenthood in our community, and then also with, I'm, I'm sure outside of our community as well, carries the stigma that it is only for abortions. Um, but Planned Parenthood is a clinic, it's a health clinic, and there are so many things that you could, um, resources and things that you could gain from Planned Parenthood. And when we paint this one resource with this broad stroke of just doing one thing, or even if it, and I'm not saying that it has to, or even if that one thing that it does doesn't align with your values, it may be somebody else. And we do want to make sure that people have an awareness of what's out there so that they can decide for themselves whether that is a resource that they want to connect to. Um, sexual education within our schools, I think that's another resource that I think could help our kids, um, our teens, our youth, be able to access information in a way that might feel more comfortable, comfortable for them. Some of us, um, as we're talking about this, some of us may never uh, feel comfortable to have the conversation with our kids, but it is important for them to have access to information or resources outside of the home, because to, uh, for us, sexual education is also health education. Um, some of the other resources that we share on our platform, as Celia mentioned, um, we live on Instagram, and some of the um, resources that you will see us share are book recommendations, and that's for both adults and also children, um, websites um, that are sex positive or um, support how to have conversations with young kids, um, podcasts, therapists, and coaches. There is so much information out there um, and a lot of really passionate people who are sharing like some really valuable information. Um, resources on contraceptives, 
condoms, birth control, and where you can get those resources for free. Um, health professionals and how to have conversations with them about your sexual health. And then sites for SDI testing. I think these are things that, resources that we wanna put out there so that our community knows where to go um, if they are having these conversations or if they're interested. All right, next slide. Uh, so as I, so this is what we're doing to normalize the um, conversation. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, part of my role is content specialists around advocacy efforts and our resources. It is very important for us to include in this conversation um, survivors of sexual assault. And I apologize for the emotions, but um, I will share that this is one of my favorite ways to um, contribute to our project. Um, it's important for us to acknowledge our survivors. And to create a community where they can learn about some of these things, um, both that they can feel like they're not alone um, and that there's a place in our community where they can go for information. I think while, you know, we're sharing resources that are outside of our community, um, for me, my favorite place to feel safe and to learn about, you know, things is within my community. And so we wanted to create a space for this. Um, uh, next slide, please. So Tahiba with survivors. Um, it's important for us to advocate for our survivors of sexual assault, sexual abuse, and child molestation. Um, that we stand in solidarity, that this is a community for them and that there are resources out there for them. Um, part of a healing for survivor is to heal the sexual self. And I think it's important for, like I said, it's important for us to have that, to build that in our community um, so that there's a place where that gets normalized, where the shame gets re removed and a lot of the stigma that comes with this conversation that we can work through that together. Um, I will at least say, I'm sorry, like I said, I'm sorry for the emotions, um, but I will at least name that I am a survivor myself, which is why um, I feel very passionate about this project and also just really emotional. Um, as a survivor, um, because conversations around sexual assault can be very triggering um, and the efforts that we put out there, especially as somebody who cares, can also be very traumatizing it felt important for me and I think for us to put into the community something that feels holistic. Um, and that to me uh, is away from intervention. There's so many resources or, or that are already out there around, in, around intervention and that is more on the preventative side and that also addresses families. Um, so that is our hope with this project and also in acknowledging survivors as a part of it. Um, next slide, please. So this is some of the content and some of the, the efforts that we've done. So Tahiba project is, we're only one years old. Um, and this is some of what we have done within the past year. Um, so it's April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So we tried to create um, content around topics that would be useful for both survivors and allies to survivors. Um, we talk about trauma, we talk about consent, um, and then we try to highlight survivors who are thriving. And then, as I've said several times, and we share those resources. Uh, next slide. Um, one of the opportunities that we had uh, last year was to connect with the SANE nurse, sexual assert nurse examiner. Um, and this is Kathy Moleni, and I think, and like I mentioned that it's important for us to collaborate with other Pacific Islanders in the community. Oftentimes I feel um, that as Pacific Islanders, 
um, we are more likely to start our healing process with others who look just like us. Uh, next slide. Um, on our Instagram account, uh, we also have um, in our bio a link to a hub of resources. And these are the main resources that we have on our page, acknowledging that um, there are a lot of survivors out there and that they have access to these resources. And these resources and a lot of what we're talking about is specific to the Utah community. Um, so we've got the Salt, uh, Salt Lake City Family Justice Center, um, Rape Recovery Center, Planned Parenthood, and then also the Uni Crisis, uh, crisis Line. Next slide. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go through these quickly, but I do at least want to say, next slide. Why a culturally adaptive approach to sexual wellness in our community? Why, and I've talked a little bit about this already, but why is it important for us to have one here in our community? So cultural norms have an influence on young people's perceptions around sexual health and can play a role um, in influencing sexual practices among uh, diverse youth. We don't have information around our community data that shows anything about sex, um, sexual abuse, sexual wellness, anything like that. So we look to other communities to see what research or what findings they have in, um, in other communities. Uh, next slide, please. So these are the different outcomes. And um, I know that we're a little bit short on time and I don't wanna cut Ashley short, um, but we'll just, uh, we'll definitely, if we can share the slides after if anybody's interested. Um, Let's see, I'll, I'll share two more slides and then I'll pass the time. So different culture, what, we're, what they're seeing is that different cultural standards around sexual conduct may affect how young women perceive their sexual roles and make them less willing to engage in sexual communication, negotiation and self-protective behavior. I think this is really important for us to understand that um, the difficulty in communication can, and expectations around sexual encounters and the inability to communicate that can create situations where people might get hurt. Um, go ahead to the next slide, Celia. So these are, there's a um, study in the African-American community around the inability, uh, inability to communicate and negotiate. And then one more slide. And then also findings in the Asian American community also around um, communication and how culture is impacting that. All right, and then next slide. So uh, we believe that information offered in a way that is relatable to our community and integrates our beliefs and values can be more effective and can lead to more positive outcomes. And we're gonna pass it to Ashley. Thank you, Vienna. Um, and going off of the last slide from Vienna, um, being able to reach those positive outcomes is possible through technology. Um, focusing on our values and mission, uh, we as TVP uh, turn to social media, specifically Instagram, um, as a way to nurture and cultivate healthy relationships. Uh, using Instagram or the app itself has provided us with tools to help us reach uh, our goals. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and the first tool that we are offered is a platform. Um, and this is a place that allows us to connect to individuals within our community, expand our community outreach from local to global and everything in between, and is solely focused on sexual health and wellness specifically for our people. Uh, next slide. Second, we have tools to create. Um, the Instagram app, for example, uh, gives us creative freedom using stories, boomerangs, IGTV, IG Live, and even the standard post, where we are able to create content that matters to our people, um, that is relatable, and offers understanding. It also allows us to engage with our communities through surveys, questionnaires, and even sharing experiences. Um, it also allows us to share resources um, that may not be widely known, um, but also how to search for resources um, if you're not local to the Salt Lake City area. Uh, next slide, please. And the third tool we have is a safe space. Um, and this is very important because this is where it helps us to go cultivate a healthy environment. 
um, where we can have open conversations about what sexual health and wellness means to us as individuals, but also as a community as a whole. Um, it also allows cultural connections, um, <clears throat> both again to individual and community wide, um, where our Pacific Islander cultures bring us all together as one. And this allows for deeper understanding um, and compassion for ourselves as individuals and as a community. Uh, next slide, please. Um, understanding the tools avail available to us um, is only the beginning. So as the Tawhiba Project, we try to follow four steps to bring about change. Next slide, please. And step one, is acknowledge the issues. As a people, we cannot solve what we refuse to believe exists. So as the Tawhiwa Project, our goal is to raise awareness on the lack of education within our own homes, and also to have conversations that address, that address the stigmas that we were brought up with. Next slide. Um, we asked our followers to tell us um, to tell us what sexual myths, tapus, or practices you've heard or experienced within your Pacific Islander culture that made you go, uh, made you cringe. And here are some of the responses. Um, it's tapu, to wear your hair down because you're trying to draw sexual attention. If the oil dries on the skin before the taolunga ends, you're not a virgin. The virginity test, a practice wherein a white sheet is provided to the couple to consummate their marriage upon and quote unquote, prove the bride's virginity to the family. And the last one we have is that you should automatically get married if you're pregnant out of wedlock. Next slide. Step two is to create or find a safe space. Uh, and this can be a person or persons that you trust enough to be vulnerable with, who you can openly talk to without fear um, of judgment, blame, or criticism. Um, it can also look like us, the Tawhiba Project, and our Instagram page, where we strive to normalize all conversations surrounding sexual health and wellness. Um, this is important um, because it builds confidence in what sexual health looks like for individuals and for our community. Next slide, please. So we asked our followers or our community the following questions um, and here are some of the responses. So um, first question is, did you feel safe talking about your body and its changes growing up? 38 people answered this question. 28 of them said no, that they did not feel safe talking about their body and its changes, while only 10 of them said yes. The second question is, are you satisfied with your level of sex ed? 32 people answered, 16 said yes, and 16 said no. Uh, do you consider sex ed a priority in your life now? 33 people answered, 26 said yes, <clears throat> that it is now a priority, while seven still said no. Uh, did you ever have the talk with your parents or guardian? 39 answered this question. 27 people said no, that they did not or never had the talk, while 12 people said yes. Next question is, were you taught about sex? 39 people answered, 32 said no, that they were never taught about it. Um, and seven said yes. Uh, do you see a need for sex education in the Pacific Islander community? 35 people answered and all said yes. Do you want to learn more about sexual health and wellness? 26 answered and all said yes. Knowing that more of our people are willing to learn and grow is a great start to bring about change. Uh, next slide, please. So step three, start the conversation. Yes, it will be awkward and it can be very emotionally draining, but keep talking. The topics will vary, so you can start small and progress with your comfort level. Um, a few topics to start off with or 
recommendations or ideas um, is like the menstrual cycle, explaining what it is, how it affects you, having the conversations with girls, women, boys, and men is important. Um, STIs and STDs, what they are, how they affect you, and how to protect yourself. Um, sexual assault survivors. Sometimes the best thing you can do is to just listen. Um, <clears throat> and then also condoms and birth control. Where can you get them? Like what, what uh, protection do they offer you um, if you choose to become sexually active? <clears throat> Now, even if you're just observing the conversations, the growth of an individual is always changing. So the conversations will too. Next slide. Uh, let's see here, we, we asked our followers, what are some practices you maintain to have healthy sexual relationships? And here are some of their responses. Open and nonviolent communication strategies, like using I statements with feelings. <clears throat> Explore your interests. Whatever it is, it helps you discover yourself. Get tested regularly if you're adventurous. Um, take time to try new things with myself and with a partner I trust. And then also communicate to your partner. Important fact on this one. If you can't, you shouldn't be with them. Communication is very important. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so step four, commit. Commit to the cause. Be the change that you needed growing up. What that can look like is um, using anatomically correct names for body parts, answering questions from children um, about sex without a negative re reaction because that only builds into the shame around sex that we grew up with. And it's time to break that cycle. Uh, being an advocate to sexual assault survivors and also putting yourself first, discovering the next improved version of you um, is very important and a good way to commit to change. We as the Tahiba Project are dedicated to supporting education, awareness, advocacy, and advocacy for sexual health and wellness in the P Pacific Islander community. We put ourselves out there so that other people can learn, heal, and grow from whatever their starting point is. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, my current role with TVP is focused on individual and personal development. And one way uh, we've tried to help our people recenter themselves is by going through a self self care check in or a quick check. Uh, this can be done every few months or as needed per experience. This helps us to take a moment and be completely honest with yourself your feelings, uh, the current events in your life and how they impact you and your health. With these acknowledgements, um, we can address what changes need to be made. Um, and I like to use these questions as journal entries. It allows me to basically brain dump uh, all of my thoughts in regards to each question, which are, am I showing up for myself? Uh, what does that look like currently? Uh, what's failed? what um, has been successful and what new ways have I come up with to show up for myself? Uh, am I confident in my ability to communicate my needs? Uh, did I find it difficult to talk about something or do I know what triggered that difficulty? Um, what am I doing to protect my energy? Are my boundaries effectively contributing to my well-being? And am I happy with who I am today? Now, these are just a few questions that we have. Um, and as you think of more, you can, can add those to your self-care check-in every few months or so, just to make sure that you are keeping yourself centered um, and yeah, being there for yourself. Now, I also do an occasional series called Ash's Dating Adventures, where I talk about my dating and sex life. Uh, the point of this series is to openly present real life experiences as a Polynesian woman um, and to normalize the conversations about sex and dating in the modern world. 
um, and also to share and discuss my experiences in meeting new people, dating, and my exploration or journey through just learning sex. <clears throat> um, next slide, please. Now, we strive to stick to these four steps, um, and you can follow along with us on our Instagram page. We do have a TikTok that we're slowly branching out into, um, but these are our handles, so feel free to follow along. Um, we are short on time, but we would like to change over to any questions. Okay, so there's one question in here, addressing taboo topics leaves us open to criticism, oftentimes harassment. Have you received this for your work and how do you address it? Um, doing the Ashes dating adventures, <clears throat> um, some of the responses or like DMs that I've received is that it's kind of embarrassing that I'm so openly talking about uh, my sex life uh, specifically. Um, and that's part of the reason why I wanted to start off uh, this series is because it, it, I shouldn't be ashamed about wanting to learn about sex, like what it means to me, what good healthy sex means to me. Um, so going into, or like when we first talked about the project, it was like, yeah, that's going to happen. But that's also what we want to be able to dismantle, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, since the conception of Tauhiba, we haven't had much negative feedback, which has been great. Um, but we do, you know, as we grow, um, it's probably going to happen eventually. And how we address it is, um, well, how we hope to address any kind of feedback is to learn from it and then, you know, just move forward. I don't know, Vienna, if you want to um, uh, chime in on that as well. But, um, but yeah, fortunately, we haven't received much harassment about the work that we're doing. Um, but we are, and we're, and we're just so excited to keep doing it. Um, yeah, I, in my experience so far, we haven't received any um, criticism yet. <laughs> we're still open to that happening. Um, no, I haven't seen any harassment at all on our Instagram. Um, I will say that, you know, there are, like I said, we're still learning and there are things that we have, at least one post that we have put out that needed correcting. Um, and we were open to that because we're still learning. And although we're taking the lead on this, um, we are also members of the community that need a lot of education. So um, I think that's as, not yet, I'll say that. <laughs> Yeah, we have another question here is, can you share more about having the conversation with family and what feedback they have had openly discussing these hard topics? Um, leaning into like the Ashes Dating Adventures, um, I was very hesitant to call my mom and be like, hey mom, just so you're aware, I'm talking about my sex life that you don't know anything about, but I'm sharing it with the world. And so eventually you're gonna come across it. It's very intimate. I still haven't had that conversation. But what I have done is I've shared posts from our Tahiba page, or I've just mentioned, like today I said, we're speaking in a Pacific Islander conference about the Tahiba project. So they get the idea that we're talking about sex. And I, I still get the feeling that it's like, oh, I don't want to hear you talking about sex. It's like, you're almost 40 years old. Why do you have to talk about it like that? So it's just like, we're taking a very, I guess, gentle approach where it feels appropriate um, as an open discussion. Um, going off on like individuals like for myself, because I'm talking openly about my sex life, um, I would find appropriate wording for the conversation so that it's done in a healthy and um, educational way, if that makes sense, where it's not just I'm being vulgar. Like it's, it can be addressed respectfully. Yeah. Now we have another question. What advice would you all give to youth, young adults, and survivors in particular, where their parents slash family are not ready to have conversations about sexual health and wellness? Um. 
I think that's a, a great question. And I think one that we are continually asking ourselves and trying to build some content around to address how can we support um, our community who wants to have these conversations, but, and they want to have that within the context of like community or within the context of their own culture and are not able to have that with parents and family. I think starting with yourself and um, like, like Ashley's self um, check-in, starting with yourself to know what you want, um, to know what you're curious about, uh, and starting there, I would say um, start with your self-development first. Um, and then I think with this conversation and then with survivors and with just people, find trusted adults, someone that you can trust, that you can talk to, um, that uh, can hold space for you and reach out to them. Let them know they may not have the answers, but I think if um, an adult knows that there's some curiosity there, they can at least be there with you and you know learn along the way because that's really all we're doing is just learning together with the community. Um, so yeah. Yeah, and if you're a youth or um, like a young adult and you don't have anyone that is ready to have that conversation, just like Vienna said, find someone that is because there 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 is someone and and with our platform, hopefully you know. Uh, if you are comfortable enough, maybe you can reach out to us because we are ready to have those conversations and we hold space for everyone that is. Um, I think that's it. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and stop. Yeah, so that's our time. Thank you, everybody. It sounds a lot. To, why do you think it will get messed up? If there's no more questions, I want to thank you, powerful ladies, for opening up the table to talk about such a sensitive topic and really appreciate all that you do with the Tauhiba project. Um, I have a question. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, how can we get a copy of the slides or potentially like go through um, like the trainings that you all provide? We will send, so um, we can send the updated slides to PICTAR so that they can email that, that out to um, those of you who have, have registered for the conference. And then I'd also suggest um, just following us on Instagram. Uh, most of what we do is there um, and we, haven't like, you know, graduated to um, putting out actual, um, what's it called, classes for the community. Really, uh, our hope is just to be um, a space to talk together and community communicate together about something that um, feels important to us. But we'll send the, the updated slides to PICTAR and then they can email that out to those of you who have registered for the conference. Awesome, thank you. And then I do have one other question and I apologize if I missed this, um, but are you all like a like a 5013C nonprofit? Are you all kind of just working on this together um, in the hopes of becoming that? We, yes, we are not a nonprofit yet um, because I, I think so, Ash, Ashley spoke to it a little bit that the conversation can be emotionally draining. And this is something that we do because we're passionate about it. And then building up to a nonprofit is like, like that's a, a goal, um, but we also want to pace ourselves as we are learning about this as well. Um, but we just, um, right now are a social media platform um, and a community on the internet. That's that's what we are. And we'll say grassroots efforts. Awesome, thank you so much. <laughs> Everybody for all of the feedback, um, for your support. We all feel your mana. Um, we're just so grateful to have had the opportunity to share and be a part of this um, conference. I will say, and I know I've talked so much, but I just want to say um, that when, when I mentioned that I am a survivor and when I finally came to terms with that place that I came to was this conference and I was just and I feel like I was just looking for um, community um, I think I was looking for other survivors um, I was looking for something that looked like me 
Um, and this was the place that I came to first, this conference. And so, and this was back in 2017. So to be here now and to um, have the opportunity to, to present on something like this, um, it just is uh, just a really awesome moment for me. So thank you, Pictar, um, for this. For me, on behalf of survivors, um, I just am really grateful. So yeah, thank you, everybody. Can I say something real quick? Yeah, sorry. Thank you so much, Vienna. I just, before Oscar speaks, I know we're going a little bit over time. Um, I just want you to understand the impact that your project has. And it's moved Oscar to share a few words from his perspective as a male. Um, and just letting you know that you definitely are not alone. And thank you so much for sharing. Oscar. Thank you, Sincera. I just wanted to get on and, and tell you ladies, thank you so much for having courage. It is not an easy thing to share in our culture about, um, about sexuality. It's not an easy thing to even share about, about your lives and about what you have gone through and what it is that you want to share with the world, especially within our people. There are Tongan and Samoan and women all over the world that are our people that don't get to speak like you have today. And I just barely walked in and I walked in late, but I want you to know, thank you so much for being brave. Thank you for being courageous. You know, our women, a lot of time are just kind of pushed down and they just kind of stay silent. They don't say anything until they have to absolutely speak. And I want to tell you from my heart that I'm proud of you and I'm grateful for you sharing today. Thank you. Thank you so much. For those of you who are needing this CEU credit, your code for this session is Tonga, T-O-N-G-A. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll come back in about 10 minutes. So stretch, regroup, ground yourself. I know it's a heavy topic and then we'll come back to our next session. Thank you so much. Peace. <laughs>